Ux Remix. Any great fans of the TV series will definitely recognise the um, theme tune. Which is one of the more unusual theme tunes, I think, for a, um, a TV series that's currently on at the moment. That is, of course, The Walking Dead. We're going to be talking about The Walking Dead very shortly with uh, Chris Philpot on the box, on the radio from the On The Box blog at stuff.co.nz. Morning, Chris. Morning, how are you? Very well. Yes, looking forward to talking Walking Dead. But first up, there's some news to cover. Um, a, a new series... Kind of like a um, a piss take on the office. The paper office is going to be starting up. What's that about? Well, no, it's it's what it is. Is Dunder Mifflin is the brand of paper in the office. Of course, they all work in an office, produces paper. Dunder Mifflin is the company. And what's happened is Staples um, in America, a company who own a paper company called Quill dot com, and they're going to be releasing a brand of paper. Like so, you can buy a ream of paper branded with Dunder Mifflin. And what's referred to as, it's kind of reverse product placement, huh. where it's a brand from a show moving into the real world. Oh, I see. Um, and I just thought it was interesting because this opens up my dream of being able to eat chicken at a Los Pollos Hermanos <laughs> yeah. chicken restaurant, which people will recognize from the from uh, Breaking Bad. Absolutely. So it, it's an interesting development, and it's a really cool way of tying in a show, I guess. I mean, fans of the show will go out, they'll buy the paper. Um, it publicizes the the show by having the paper advertised around. People will be saying, what's Dunder Mifflin? Well, it comes from the office. <laughs> and it just seems like a really cool idea. I, I, I just thought it was worth bringing up on the show. Yeah, absolutely. There was, um, also, I think also HBO on their site, because they, they sell a whole bunch of merchandise, was selling True Blood at, at a point as well. I think it was a soft drink flavored tr- True yeah, Blood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I bought some True Blood at the Armageddon Expo a few weeks ago. It, it's... Um, I don't know if you've tried Frank's Blood Orange uh, or Tangy Orange or whatever they call it, uh, drink. It's kind of that drink, but it's in a True Blood branded bottle. And you can buy it as uh, the proper glass bottles from the show, the whole works. It's quite cool. I've got one on my desk, actually. It's cool. Um, which is missing right now. I can't see it. Otherwise, I'd hold it up for the camera. But, but um, no, it's 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 a cool idea. And, and as I say, these reverse product placements... Is a cool, is just a cool way of tying in a show to a product rather than the other way, which is having a paper brand show up in the show. That's right. Yeah, create your own and then sell it. That's very cool. Um, back here <laughs> in New Zealand, uh, Freeview is um, being pushed out by a, um, a a new venture between Sky and TVNZ. The details are a bit sketchy on this, but they're calling it Ig- Igloo. Yeah, well, it's Igloo. It's a twenty-five dollar a month um, kind of a. I think it's meant to be competition for Freeview. Um, whether they'll have, uh, it's a set top box that will play digital channels. Whether there'll be free to air channels on it or not, no one knows. Um, what will be on the pro, the actual Igloo product, no one really knows. Um, it's kind of this really vague idea, and I wanted to see if you, um, what your thoughts were on having these things being announced super vague as they've been. Even the announcement this week, Freeview's planning to launch a couple of new channels next year. What those channels are, we don't know. Mm. Um, it's all this really super vague talk about the future of the broadcasting industry in New Zealand. And, and it's it's something that I'm a little bit confused by why they would be so vague. I think it's this thing where they don't want perhaps speculation to occur before um, with regards to any specific details of what they're doing. But I'm not sure what the point is of announcing it so far ahead when there's no real details about it. What do you think? Yeah, it's interesting now putting it out there for for people to talk about like this. Um, Well, I don't know. I mean, it's another pay TV service. It's with Sky TVNZ, who is still publicly owned. It's a mystery Mm. as to why they aren't being sold. Maybe they might be sold in the next three years, although National didn't campaign on that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I... I think it's a shame for Freeview. I think um, Freeview is a, is, a, is a great and fantastic service that provides all those free-to-air channels. Um, in the meantime, TVNZ7 is going. It might be turning into an, a shopping channel. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. As you say, the details are so sketchy, I, I, I really don't know what to think. I mean, it would be great to, to think that maybe there might be some public service content on this um, 
on this new venture called Igloo, but then again, why why pay for public service? Then because therefore, exactly. if you're paying for it, then is it really public service? Yeah, so I don't know. I think the big problem with Igloo is that it, it's um, unless it's a subscription series where you can pick specific channels, um, as we've talked about before on your show. Um, I think they're going to completely miss the market. I don't think anyone's going to be happy to pay $25 a month when they're not happy to pay whatever Sky costs now. I can't imagine that, you know, oh, it's only half the price is going to be a, yeah. is, is going to be a way of dragging in those customers. I think what they need is this is a $100 box that you buy, and then it comes with, you know, 20 channels like Freeview, and then you can pay for specific Sky channels that you can add to your subscription. So you could add Soho for $5 a month. You could add Sky Sport 1 for five dollars a month or something like that um, and I think that's the way that uh, talking to consumers that's the way that they want the market to go and I don't know that Igloo is going to satisfy those people mm. all right well we'll see um, I think more details later on in December uh, but into the review now and uh, it's in the what we shouldn't be watching section because it's not here in New Zealand yet but we have been watching the first half of series two of The Walking Dead yeah, I think for fair, fair disclosure, we're going to be spoiling the show pretty heavily. Um, so if you're listening to The Walking Dead, maybe stop listening. Uh, if you're watching The Walking Dead, yeah. maybe stop listening to us right now. Um, I, I, you and I have talked about The Walking Dead already. I loved this first half of the series. It was very, very. I'm not convinced they have the proper mix of characters to pull it off. Yeah. Um, but. I didn't really like this latest episode, and I think you're the opposite, aren't you? Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're really coming out from a different angle. Um, I've been not hating the series so far, but I've been very disappointed. It's been really slow moving. Um, all, all the characters have ended up in one spot on a farm. It's kind of a place of, of, of refuse from, all the, from the zombie horde outside. They do go out a couple of times to do various things, but... It's just been really slow moving, and they'll be trying to develop the characters. I haven't been caring so much about the characters. Um, in fact, I was hoping that some of them might be eaten fairly soon. Um, <laughs> and, and, and there's been the story of the missing girl, Sophie, and that was just seemed to be dragging on, and I really wasn't enjoying it until the latest episode, where it all it kind of exploded at the end with um, just this massive uh, kind of emotional outlet. And then I can understand why... Everything now was so slow because it was building up to this a big emotional event, although I wish it didn't take so long to get there. But I was so satisfied with the um, end of, the, of this latest episode. Very satisfied. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's why the first six episodes of the first half of the series were so slow and real character focus was they were building up the emotional gravitas for this moment at the end of the latest episode, and I'm sure anyone who's seen it will know what we're talking about, it involves Shane and the barn door and pretty much just a massacre outside, yeah. and then the appearance of a character who'd been missing for a while. Now, yeah. I, I think it was a clever play by the writers to kind of build up to that moment. However, viewers kind of went in two different directions. There was people like yourself who wanted more, more zombies, they wanted more deaths, they wanted more shootings, they wanted their zombie show to be completely simple and just follow, um, uh, you know, the traditions I, of zombie, the zombie genre, yeah, I guess, is what I, I don't know about, I don't know about, I don't know about simple. Well, yeah, I don't know about simple, but, but yeah, a little bit more um, blood, blood and guts, because it's a zombie, you know, show. So, you know, but anyway, yes, yes, go on. And then there was the other half of the viewers who were people like me, I think, um, who were more interested in the characters and more interested in life after this, you know, apocalyptic event mm. you know how to survive in a world where there is really no survival and and to me i thought that you know introducing herschel and the farm and introducing a, a semblance of safety for the characters we've been following since the start of the show um i thought that was a really good way to go and i would have liked to have seen them keep exploring that maybe without needing to go to this big life-changing event that happened at the end of the latest episode Although I can't understand why they went there, to but be fair. it's moving, apparently, I mean, I haven't read the comics, nor have you, because this whole series is, is based on the Walking mm. Dead comics. Um, but uh, from what I can gather, it's actually moving the story forward. In the comics, the story actually moves a lot faster than this, and there's also apparently a greater sense of danger for each character. Each character could almost, you know, you get this feeling they could die at any moment, and, and that's what I don't get from the series. I, I, I feel like they've, they're a little bit too safe, you know, in that we're being a little bit precious about some of these characters. In fact, the character of Shane in the comic books, apparently, um, should have been dead a long time ago. He never reached the farm. 
Um, but yet yeah. we still have them. And, you know, this is some preciousness about, okay, well, we've got these actors and they apparently are pretty good. We need to keep them for the story. Mm. Well, it's Shane. I mean, I think we've mentioned on the show that Shane gets shot by Carl even before they leave the campsite mm. outside Atlanta, which happened at the end of episode five of the first series. So, I mean, Shane has no right being around. Equally, I think Sophia, who is her fate is revealed at the end of the latest episode, she's still alive at this point of the show. Um, in fact, she's Carl's little girlfriend. I, I don't know how serious that is. They're both only ten. So, wow. um but but she's still alive. She's still around and dealing with everything that's going on. So they're deviating, um, aren't they? They're really moving off the script. They are moving well away from the comic books. And But I have faith that that's probably the right thing to do because one of the producers of the show is the guy who wrote the comic books, uh, Robert Kirkman, who is heavily involved in the production of the show, in the writing of the show, in the direction of the show. When you see interviews with The Walking Dead, it's usually him that's fronting the interviews and talking to the press. Um, so... I have faith that they're doing the right thing by deviating away from the comics. Comic books, TV are different things anyway. So, mm. you know, the storytelling methods are different and all that. Um, I, I, I like where it's going. I'd like to see them stick around at the farm for a little while longer because I think this question of, you know, it's whether it's survival of the fittest, as Shane believes, or whether it's survival by negotiation, which is kind of what Rick thinks, I think that's a more interesting question than where are we going to find some weapons to kill these zombies. Um, so you're going to, you, and you, I like, you, you I like to, that that's the direction of the show. You prefer to see them sitting at the farm wondering whether or not they should have weapons all the time and should the kid be shooting, you know, should he be practicing with the gun? Oh, come on, let's get on the road and let's, let's, let's um, move to a new town. Well, I, I, just think, I just think if I wanted to watch people run around and shoot zombies, I'd watch Resident <laughs> Evil or something like that. Uh, the Walking Dead's a drama show. I want drama in my drama show, not just blood and cats. The same way that, uh, you know, something like Boardwalk Empire, I don't like all the sex scenes and stuff in that. I don't want that. It's a drama show. I want the drama. Ren, I need, I need a certain body count every episode, all right? I, I, need, I need my quota <laughs> fulfilled. <laughs> the quote, you need your quota fulfilled. Yeah. Oh, you should write to Robert Kirkman and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. What's on uh, New Zealand TV this week? Well, this week's kind of interesting. Tonight we've got the finale of The Borges, the first series finale. And if you're sticking around with The Borges, then you're doing a better job than I am. I gave up around episode four. Uh, very, very slow moving, but a very interesting show if you're a history nut, I think. Uh, so probably a lot of people are still watching that. That's 9.30 tonight on 3. Mm. Uh, Friday night is Caprica. Now, Caprica's um, the spin-off from Battlestar Galactica. It's a prequel talking about um, the rise of the Cylons initially before they were ever involved in a battle with humanity. Cool. And that starts on 4 on Friday at 10.40 p.m. Uh, it's you about gonna... a year and a half old now, Yeah, you... but it's a really good series. And it was cancelled, I think, after the first series. But are, are, are you going to watch it? I am going to watch it, yeah. Cool. All right, I'll watch it. I'll watch it too because I love Battlestar Galactica, and I heard sort of you know mixed things about this. But you know, I'm keen to check it out. So, so we should look at that in the next few weeks. I actually did watch the first few episodes of Caprica last year when it was on in the States, and oh. it is very, very good. Okay. I, the cancellation, I think, was purely for low ratings. It wasn't for lack of quality. Um, it's a really good show and definitely worth watching if you're a, if you're a BSG fan. Cool. And then, of course, on Monday night is the finale of Series 15 of South Park. Quietly, Comedy Central's been airing South Park two weeks after the U.S. airings. Um, so the episode on Monday night, 8.30 p.m. on Comedy Central is only two weeks old, and it's the uh, big finale for that, the latest series of South Park. So that's definitely worth checking out as well. I think South Park's been as good as it's ever been this year. Uh, and for me, it's been a fantastic show, really. One of my must-watches every week. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, there's a great selection there. And I should mention that, so The Walking Dead we've been watching now, That's been, we've been watching that on U.S. time, and they're now taking mm. a, a break um, over over summer, and it'll be back early next year for the second half of that it's series. Mid February, mid February, it's on. I think it's mid February that the second series starts on TV two. So okay, so um, I'm be not sure if I'll be back into the downloading on that one. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see if you can resist the temptation. Chris Philpot <laughs> is um, on Twitter as well. Twitter dot com forward slash Chris Philpot NZ and on the box uh, blog at stuff dot co dot NZ.